Sunday Squad, we talked uh, knives on a couple of the Zooms and on the lives. Uh, so I figured I'd give you a little tour of my knife collection for all of you knife geeks out there. I guess by virtue of the fact that I have so many, I am now also a, uh, a knife nerd or a knife geek. So down here, right in this row, are all of the fighting blades. And most of them are kernel. Uh, I even got one of the kernel uh, lock blades, which is pretty cool. Uh, because I don't think they made a lot. Or this is when, you know, the, the patent was still pending. You can see it on there, patent pending. So that's kind of a cool little feature for that uh, kernel. But most of these are, like, that's a kernel, kernel, kernel. Uh, some of them are pretty gnarly. I mean, that guy right there is pretty gnarly. Unfortunately, on a lot of these knives, um, I have forgotten who made them or what company. And if they don't have a visible logo on them, then I, it really slips the uh, data bank. I can't recall at all, you know, who, who it was and who made them or where they came from. So, which is a shame because some of them I do know and, and a lot of them I don't. So, all of the kernel stuff, that's kind of cool little, um, this is a T yep, TXC holster and kernel knife or blade holder as well. Little dual package there. It's kind of a neat thing. Uh, and, it, and it really does well with uh, concealing too. I mean, it's super, super concealable. A buddy gave me this one. That's, that's a super freaking gnarly tool. So clips on the belt, and when you pull it out, I mean, it's just meant to do a lot of freaking damage. That thing's probably against the Geneva Convention. Yeah, that thing just stays on my shelf too. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. This is probably not something I am going to carry with me. It just stays on the shelf. Uh, Colonel, you go down here. Is this a Colonel or a, a clone? Yeah, it's Colonel. Pretty cool knives. These here are all from here over are all Browse Blades. Uh, you know, I did the collaboration with the Browse Blade, one of them, but they're super, super sexy, a lot of these guys. I mean, they're like works of art. So that thing all skeletonized is pretty freaking cool. Uh, that's not something I'm gonna carry with me either, just because it, it, it's not, to me, it's not super functional. Uh, the blade is so thin, that utility blade, that I'll probably freaking break it. I mean, but damn, man, that is a cool-looking blade right there. Uh, but you can see what I mean. I mean, they make some super, super beautiful blades or knives, whatever. I know it's all semantics issue when it comes to blades and knives, blah, blah, blah. This one here is a, um, who, who's this again? This is a... Emerson, and this was a Bravo company, had a bunch of these engraved, and this one is also serial numbered 008, and I have the, uh, the this uh, Bravo company watch with uh, serial number 8, and um, a uh, uh, Wilson 1911 with uh, serial number 008. So Bravo company did a little package for all of its, all their gunfighters, and uh, gave them just gave them to us, which is badass. I mean, very cool. Uh, this guy here was a unit issue knife or, yeah, it was a unit issue knife. So the TAC Ops, West German made, super light and super practical. This is, this is also one of my issued knives and I've had it all this time. So just your standard Spyderco. Yep. Right there. Uh, let me see what else we have to talk about. So all the bush knives are up here. I have one of the first knives I've ever ever bought when I when I joined the army. So it's that old Gerber BMF basic multifunction. And yep, I still own that thing. The you can see the wear and tear on the sheath. It's pretty crispy too. I still have it. Uh, let me see. So bush knives, I love bush knives. Some of them I know the story to, others I don't. This one here was made by a full-blooded uh, Yakima Indian chief, which is badass, you know? So Damascus, and this is the, uh, the antler is a, is a deer that he 
shot as well and harvested. So boom. Uh, I wish I knew the maker of this one because this is beautiful. There's a beautiful bush knife right here. I mean, it's gorgeous. So there's the logo right there. One of you guys will know who that is probably. But that is a spectacular looking bush knife. Most of these are. I mean, they're not only are they super functional, but they're just works, absolute works of art. I mean, the, the craftsmanship that goes into the handle, not so not just the the blade itself, but the handle and the sheath. You know, these guys have put a lot of time and effort into it. I just got this one recently. Um, I would carry this sucker every day if it were fashionable. Uh, maybe I'll start that fashion statement and wear a bush knife every day. But uh, I had a private course last week, and one of the guys is a knife maker, and he made me this. And it's got the little Blaze Ops logo on it. And then Blaze Ops logo right there. Boom. And it's got a <clears throat> fire starter with it. So, fire starter. Boom. <laughs> and my dog just went, what the hell was that? This guy here too, I'm probably not going to use him only because this is a Horrigan knife. <clears throat> Bob Horrigan was killed in Afghanistan. He was a unit member and he made knives. And this one's got my uh, OTC number on it and my operator number. OTC 29, operator number 418, which is badass. And surprise speed, violence of action. Right there. Yep. Horrigan knife. These two are beautiful. Uh, don't know the maker, but I'm going to show you his logo. Right there. I think out of Alaska, these right here. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Um, not a lot to see there. Oh no, this guy's freaking spectacular looking too. That one's by Black. That makes some really beautiful pieces. Uh, and then, oh, these things right over here. Put this cage away so you can see better. Um, not functional, not practical at all. They're more like wall hangers uh, by a company called Apocalyptic Weapons, Apocalyptic Weapons Designs, Apocalyptic Weapons, anyway, something like that. Look it up on the IG site. I believe this guy has a owns a junkyard. So these are all tools, sprockets, leaf springs, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And he, and he makes pieces of art out of them. I mean, some are pretty eccentric. <laughs> I mean, look at that thing, man. But yeah, you can see the, t the, the tools and, and such. Uh, I, this looks like tire tread of some sort right there. But I have no idea. I mean, just bits and pieces of tools. Tools and scrap metal. Okay, maybe a big wooden sheet for that one. This is a neck hanger. But just out of junk metal and junk scraps around his around his uh, salvage yard. Which I think is freaking awesome, man, to have that kind of skill to make these kind of bludgeoning tools. This one is especially gnarly. <laughs> I mean, you can tell, see how it's... uh. You know, it's come from some sort of tool or a, a conglomeration of tools, but pretty freaking badass little brass in the uh, handle. It's right about a 550 core, and then just hand tools also. So a little hand tool, boom. Neato torpedo. <laughs> anyway, squad, just wanted to give you a little tour of my uh, knife collection for all of you knife nerds.